Well, greetings from Humboldt County. We've been uh, talking to different people about all sorts of philosophical dimensions of their lives here. And I wanted to share with you a conversation I had with a couple of ecologists, actually, the other night, or at least a part of a conversation I had, about the nature and persistence of life. And what it was, was these guys are ecologists, so they're obviously interested in life and biology, ecology, that's their job. Uh, but it's also, it's also what fascinates them. And we began talking about the sort of radical way that life is able to reestablish itself in, in terrible circumstances. So forest fires, uh, droughts, plagues, you know, all the stuff that wipes out life. And we were saying, well, yeah, it redistributes life. It certainly annihilates whole structures within ecosystems. But the interesting thing is an ecosystem always comes out of it. And this is through the most extreme situations. You find things like this happening. And so it got us to talking about this deeper question. Why is it that life is so persistent? Biological life is so persistent. Not how is it persistent, because you can begin to explain, but why? What is it about the nature of life itself that does this? Why is life driven to live, right? Um, why is it that life always finds a way? Because it's something that occurs even in life that doesn't necessarily have a what we would recognize as a kind of intelligence. It happens in life that doesn't have uh, motility. You know, it can't, it can't, it can't move on its own. Why does it happen? And at some point, we we were saying, well, in a in a funny sense, when many people try to think about this it's almost a meaningless question. They'll say, well, we can't, it, it's meaningless because we can't test for it, we can't observe it, we, we can't really see what that broader principle is, we can't really say what the why is. And so I mentioned, well, perhaps one of the things that asking why does is it puts us in a position to speculate and conjecture and see what we can see from there. We don't know things in the same sort of way, but at least we can do that. And so as we began to do that, say, well, move into the land of conjecture, we got to this point where we said, well, perhaps what it is is this, is that life is a kind of recursive principle. It's something that, that is a set of chemical actions and reactions and organizations, not just mechanical, but, but almost symphonic in their complexity. But the thing is, is that they, they are always in a state of reorganizing themselves. They are in this dynamic pattern of echoing themselves in some way. Life, in other words, is this symphonic chemical echo that's always acting upon itself within a system. Why does life persist? Why does it drive itself to persist? It has to. It's actually almost, it seems, within the physics of it, right? Within the operations of it. And we said physics of it. Well, how, how would that be? What, what could that even mean? And, and one of the ecologists that, that was part of this conversation, Nathan, said, well, maybe it's something like this. Maybe it's that life is, if life is a principle, is a fractal pattern. I said, what do you mean a fractal pattern? He goes, well, you know how fractals are, the, their sum is greater than the, the topology that's, that's there. So that they, if you, if you map out all the contours within a fractal, there's little fractals inside the fractals, inside the fractals, inside the fractals. So it sort of increases in this complexity, just, but increases in its complexity just by being what it is. He said, life's like that. Life's like a fractal because life is this chemical activity that goes into itself, it acts upon itself, it drives within itself, and while there's always this variation, there's always this change, there's always this shifting and rising and falling. You know, like we said, there's all these disasters and forest fires and, you know, all this stuff that's happening all the time and things are living and dying. Life itself persists because its very nature, its very activity is 
to persist and echo in its complexity. That's what life is. It's a fractal reflection of the dynamic complexity that perhaps is part of the cosmos itself. And I just thought, wow, that's, that's a beautiful idea. It's quite a conjecture. I don't know if it's right. I don't even know entirely if it makes sense. But it was inspiring and quite lovely. So I wanted to share it.